The main driver for the community map of Canada uh, was the need by the GIS user community in Canada for a standardized uh, national web base map from authoritative sources. Uh, Canada's provinces and the federal government have been working together for the last 10 years on an SDI, uh, building a topographic data set called GeoBase. Uh, Natural Resources Canada, the country's national mapping agency, coordinates this. Uh, this data set became the foundation for our first community map of Canada. Uh, two years ago, we approached uh, Natural Resources Canada uh, to see if they would work with us uh, to take this data set and turn it into a web base map. Uh, they agreed, and uh, we put it up on the um, on our on our we put put it into the template for the community map, and got it up in just a few months. Uh, we our goal was to get the uh, national and provincial and municipal organizations working more closely together to not just build but sustain this map. We were able to put it up so quickly because uh, it was uh, already being maintained in an Esri Geo database. It was well documented, and it had a completely open and unrestricted licensing policy. Uh, this is an example of it in the Vancouver area, the greater Vancouver area. Uh, here's another example with a bit more detail zoomed in in the Calgary area. Uh, about uh, last May, we approached the city of Toronto uh, to be the first city in Canada, Canada's largest city, uh, to provide data for the 1 to 10,000 down to 1 to 1,000 scale. Uh, they agreed, and uh, within about two weeks of getting their data, we were able to put that into the template for the large scale community map and uh, delivered it for inclusion in the world topographic map just before the user conference in San Diego last year. Uh, since then, uh, immediately after that, uh, several other municipalities joined, and since then, the last eight months, we have over 35 communities have contributed their data or are working with us on licensing terms to uh, become part of the community mapping program. Uh, it's our objective to have over 100 communities in by the end of this year, representing over 30% of the population of the country. Here's an example of the Toronto's data at a scale of 1 to 1,000, and you can see the incredible detail. Uh, decks, swimming pools, and uh, more importantly, they have individual house addresses for every house, actually for every entrance to every building in the city. Uh, the road network, the parcel maps, uh, the address points, and soon the buildings are maintained in a transaction updated database that's driven by the city's development processes. So new address applications or new uh, subdivisions are automatically put into this as part of that business process and available uh, on a daily basis. Uh, to capture these updates and make sure the community map was kept current, uh, we started a project last fall with the City of Toronto, two other cities, uh, District of Langley, Township of Langley in BC, and uh, the City of Moncton, together with Natural Resources Canada and the Province of Ontario, uh, to create this thing we call a community map exchange. It's a, it's a concept and it's a server at Esri Canada where the municipalities replicate through geodatabase replication uh, their data into the exchange and then it can be retrieved by the other participants, and similarly, they can put their updates in as well. This solves a major problem in the national map of not being able to get at up-to-date building information. They traditionally have got it from aerial photography. Uh, here's an example of these updates in action in an area of Toronto around the Toronto General Hospital. Uh, you can see on the one side, uh, before this major development took place in updating the hospital area, uh, the old map, and then after the replication, you can see the, the new map completely updated. Uh, there are many benefits that have resulted from the community map in, in Canada. For our users, they've actually achieved uh, the, the, our objective of having a standardized uh, current national base map. One of our large users, TransCanada Pipelines, the largest pipeline operator in Canada, said that this is just tremendous for them to be able to focus on maintaining their operational data and not have to worry about a base map for their applications. Uh, for the participants themselves, they actually get their community recognized on a global base map. Uh, they get a high performance web service that they can use for external applications without having an impact on their servers. And for those that are part of the open data movement, instead of just putting shapefiles on their website and people downloading them and double clicking on them and nothing happening, they can, appoint, they can point immediately to the community base map that's not the Esri community base map, it's their base map because they're the ones that have contributed to data, they're the ones that are keeping it up to date. Here's an example of a company called Renew Canada. 
that was using Google uh, to publish the top 100 infrastructure projects across Canada. They switched to the community base map and switched to Esri API because of the rich database, the rich data in the community map across the country and uh, the, uh, the, the, rich, uh, the rich development environment of the Flex application. So in summary, uh, the Community Map of Canada program has exceeded our expectations considerably as uh, dozens of organizations across the country are now working together in ways they've never been done before uh, to maintain, uh, to create this, this community map that they own. In addition, there are many GIS applications that are emerging that couldn't have been done without it. And finally, with the idea of having maps updated by transactions, a topographic and a base map updated by transactions is sweeping the country, and people are now starting to build an infrastructure that's actually sustainable.